about a year. It's called, uh, the idea is called Electric Pharaoh. Um, I found this nice bottle of scotch with an onk on it. So drink a little bit of it. Okay, so the show is called Electric Pharaoh. Uh, this idea so far, the concept has come to be a world that's become very deep uh, and two characters who oppose each other. Sort of a hero's tale. Can we go to the next slide? All right, where we are, uh, it says the future of ancient Egypt. This is um, Egypt in the future, but it's uh, stylized like ancient Egypt. Um, the way the world is built, uh, this place is called New Memphis. In the future, energy is scarce, uh, fossil fuels are gone, and um, you can't get solar power anymore because of the nuclear winter. We'll work on that idea, but energy is scarce, and one city that has a lot of it is New Memphis. They have these pyramids that they've converted into, uh, into batteries. So we got these giant glowing blue pyramid batteries. Um, one of the important points here is that the currency that people are paid in and trade in is uh, electricity. Uh, volts are like our idea of the dollar. You have these batteries that are like your wallet. It's like a, uh, a, like a super high capacity battery, but shaped like a talisman or a, you know, an Egyptian symbol. And it stores all of your, uh, your, your money, your volts. You get paid in volts. You use it for power your house and your vehicle to get to work and all of that. Can we have the next slide? Uh, the first character I want to talk about is Chen Zira, uh, Chen Zi for short. Um, he has a uh, special power where he can um, generate electricity through his fingers, and he doesn't know why. He's always been this way. Um, the way he is, he's, uh, I've got three words for him, angsty, torn, and hero. He's, a, he's an anarchist. He opposes the pharaoh, who, um, the pharaoh sort of uh, makes everyone follow, like, one religion. Um, this is the Pharaoh's religion, worship the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh is God. But Chen Zi and his friends uh, worship the life force, which has no God, and they do so in a, uh, a pub that's also their church, and they do so by drinking beer. And, you know, beer fuels the, the ignorance that gets you closer to the life force. Uh, he's also got a dying mother who he supports through his superpower that nobody knows about. He charges her talismans with his hands when she's asleep at night. She wakes up and she's okay all of a sudden. She has you know, money to, to get by on the next day. And he likes his life this way. He doesn't tell anyone about his superpower. Can we get to the next slide? The other character that I was working on is called the Pharaoh. I have three words for him. Mystery, Machiavellian, and ominous. Uh, his face is never seen. We don't even know if it's a he or a she. Foreshadowing. Uh, the secret that the, har the Pharaoh harbors is the secret of the tri triangles. Pyramid. Sorry, I wrote triangles. <laughs> The secret of the pyramids is that the pyramids, their batteries, are actually almost dead. And so the pharaoh has to enact this sort of very harsh uh, monarch-like rule over the people in order to uh, further the pharaoh's agenda and keep the city from revolting. He doesn't want anyone to know that the batteries are almost dead. Also, the uh, pharaoh's got this awesome, like, Daft Punk-like helmet that um, I'm totally going to build when we do this rock opera. It's going to look a little bit like this. Uh, if, you've, if you've seen the Daft Punk helmets, you know what I'm talking about. They glow and... Yeah. Kind of like that, it's Sphinx, uh, Nemi's headdress shape, uh, sort of like King Tut's uh, burial uh, mask. Next slide, please. So the world, okay. The classes of people in New Memphis are sharply divided between the poor and the rich. The rich, the wealthy people have uh, all these glowing um, costume jewelry, uh, clothes, shoes, uh, belts, and stuff like that. The display of wealth is the sort of like you know, how like diamonds show, like I can waste money on this diamond. Well, I can waste bolts on like having a glowing outfit. So we've got all these rich people who are like glowing all over the place with like neon clothes. And then we've got the poor people who live in the dark. And that's part of our, one of our plot points on the next slide. There's a, there's a rift between the poor people and the wealthy and the poor people want more power. So there's a revolution going on that Chen Zi or Chen Zira is in the middle of, and he doesn't really want to be. Um, he's got this superpower that he doesn't tell anyone about, and doesn't really know what to do. What happens to him is he's got these dreams. Uh, these dreams that he has every night about this girl named Ife, and each dream is a riddle. And uh, each of these riddles, when he figures out, leads him closer to getting to the pyramids. And he doesn't know why he's being drawn to the pyramids. 
What's going on is that, oh, I called him the Voltaic Pyramids. I thought that was a cool word. Five minutes? <laughs> Pharaoh knows Chenzi's secret and wants to sacrifice him, his body, to power the dying city and get all the power back. And Chenzi doesn't know this, that Pharaoh knows his secret. In fact, there are lots of secrets in Electric Pharaoh. Next slide. All right, here we are at the music. Um, what I was thinking of for the music for this is this uh, sort of militant style of music. Like, uh, I was listening to uh, this Revelations album by Muse, and a lot of these songs really felt like, uh, I don't know, they felt like a good fit for this. And also the White Stripes, um, like sort of simple, dirty blues rock. And also, uh, especially for the dream sequences, um, uh, like these electronic areas, and I was thinking of the knife for that. Could you play the, uh... So these are just three The you probably know these songs. This is Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. This is something I was listening to to get a feel for where the music and the rock album could go. Let me turn it up. Yeah. Then we've got Muse. The song is about uprising. It's sort of the militant feel of rock album. Got like a synthesizer driven line. Oh, this is the knife. You know the song from Heartbeat. It's something that a band can do. Um, obviously, everything's going to have a live band on the show. Um, I really like the feel of this, uh, like electronically, like certain techno music, or I guess the dream music. Yeah. And. Um, Next we're going to hear a song that, uh... Okay, that's good. Um, so uh, my friend Erica Patoka was uh, inspired by um, my idea for Electric Pharaoh and wrote uh, a bit of music and I helped her write the lyrics. And uh, so we got a little bit of that. You can play that. So what we were doing with this is sort of combining some of those ideas, like the, uh, the simplicity of the white stripes with like the synth-driven, like militant rock of the, uh, of the that we use album we're listening to. Let's we'll listen to this for a minute. Five minutes of questions, not five questions. No, don't do that. I can do that. <laughs> questions. I can't see people's hands. Can I have some scotch? <laughs> Don gets the scotch. Anybody with a real question? Do you have a villain besides the pharaoh? Since, he's, like, is the pharaoh mostly off stage? Is there someone we, an antagonist we see? Um, I had an idea for a villain, the pharaoh's uh, vizier, sort of like um, Iago Parrot in Aladdin. Yes. Um, <laughs> but not a bi-parrot. Um, pharaoh's vizier can be sort of like the religious 
leader of uh, New Memphis, and um, be sort of like the hated figure by the rebellion, the poor people. I have a question. Um, Chuck, is there a balls out moment in this show where shit's really going to hit the fan and it'll be awesome, totally? Well, I imagine this will rock out where, uh, and things will go crazy. Or actually, the uh, Pharaoh's guards were um, were all grabbing at, at Chen Zi inside the pyramid and trying to sacrifice his body to the battery so that he could recharge New Memphis. But what happens is he freaks out and his, uh, his superpower, his electricity from his fingers sort of like fries everyone in the room and makes just everything glow and it's just like huge electric fest happening in this room, this tiny chamber in, in this tomb in the pyramid. That's one of the ideas I had for a scene where everything just blows up, I guess. Chuck, I want to know um, how many lasers and what awesome animatronics are you going to build for this? Okay, there are 42 lasers in this show. I've already plotted it out. and uh, I, don't have, I don't have any animatronics yet, but I'm sure something will happen. Animatronic Sphinx, maybe. One of the two. I have a question. Um, Jono, um, I have to ask: Have you, you, the, the music is so well thought out, the story is so well thought out. Do you have any thoughts in terms of, yeah, the set and um, just overall artistic look of this show? Besides, besides glow sticks. Well, yeah, glow sticks. And, 40, and forty-two lasers. 42 lasers and lots of, um, I think lots of neon. Um, you can see the pyramids in the background at all times. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any like bright lights in the show. Everything's going to be real dark and there's going to be lit scenes maybe that are indoors. But lots of neon, lots of just multicolored lights everywhere, words being spelled out, symbols, ops, um, hieroglyphics everywhere. Um, a very like dark take on ancient Egypt, I think, is what the set is. Yeah. I have no specific year. I didn't want to put a year on it. Um, is there any potential for you to have a live Tesla coil where the Chenzi freaks out and his electric power goes out of control and he has a suit made of metal and Tesla coils happen on stage and scares everybody? That's the exact idea I had for that scene, actually. Great, uh, yeah. great, great, great. That's so weird. Yes. How about two? Can we get two of those? Uh, kind of a take on JD's question. Um, as far as the fight scenes, uh, are you erring more on the side of modern weaponry or the ancient Egypt weaponry? I haven't thought too much about the weaponry. Um, I'm trying to stay away from Stargate with those energy weapons that they've got. Um, I totally forgot about Stargate when I was dreaming this up. So we're going to try to stay away from that, but um, uh, definitely weapons based on electricity, not, not bullets. Is that an actual question? Yes. H and M. Uh, are you going to be showing stuff like actually in the dark? You said people live in the dark. It's the things actually take place in. Greg's over here. Oh, over there. Hey, Greg. Um, in the by in the dark, I mean that they don't have anything that's glowing on them, and they live in places that don't have light. We're going to have to use, you know, stage theatrics to show that there isn't any light where they are. A lot of blue light probably for their scenes um, to make it feel dark. What do they eat? Turkey legs. Um, I, have, I have a question in the back. Other than pyramids and neon, can you give some more examples of where the, uh, the future meets ancient Egypt? Because I like that analogy, or I like that example, so I'm just hungry for more. Where the future meets ancient Egypt. I've, I've been thinking about that a lot. Um, I'm just seeing a lot of... Um, just giant walls of hieroglyphic stories, uh, just lit with uh, like you know built-in neon lights on the inside glowing out. Um, I'm just seeing like a return to uh, ancient times stylistically, but with keeping modern technology on top of it. So I don't know. I, I feel like these people have have gone back and reinvented the ancient Egypt. Um, you know. There's also the Sphinx, which is now outfitted with like lots of like glowing stuff to show the power of the pharaoh and all that stuff. Like they're using the ancient iconology, uh, like as a basis for their. I guess it might have to do with like the religious doctrine that they're putting on the people. Um, so there's like yeah, there's a lot of that. There's the Sphinx. There's the hieroglyphics everywhere. Um, but everything has like this real like dirty lived-in feel, like neon signs and stuff like that. Maybe rain if we could do that on stage. I have no idea if we could do that. All right, Chuck, we're gonna do one more. Okay. okay. 
Do you see a lot of opportunity for cameos from previous shows, like any animatronics from the Valhalla show, like a wolf showing up in a dream or something like that? There's always uh, room for cameos, as we've seen in... in what about the Grendel Hammer? Too? Yes, the Grendel Hammer will probably show up. But I haven't planned, I haven't like built any of that, and that's sort of something that happens uh, after rehearsal. All right, everybody give it up for Chuck Green. He's pretty much the best.